this is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today we are going to be making an absolute monster of a project. This is going to be a super long video so I hope you stick with me. There is going to be a lot to cover. Let's jump in. We are going to be making today this quilling paper cupcake. It's about four inches tall, about three inches wide, and you're going to need this template that's going to be available on my website. I have links to this in the description box for the video. It'll lead you right there. But you're going to need about, I would print at least two of these if you can. And I'll explain why later on. We're going to need colors for your frosting. I'm going to be making a kind of a vanilla frosting. I like to use two different colors. I have an ivory and then a bright white. And we also need the color that you're going to choose for your wrapper. This wrapper I'm going to make in a light blue. You're also going to need what you're going to use for your cherry. And I have a crimson color here for most of the cherry, but then I add a little bit of a highlight with this pink, this deep rose color as well. I will mention every one of my strips today is going to be 1 8 inch wide. There are multiple brands, but I'll mention that as we go. I'm also using a background paper for the wrapper. And so what you want to do is, is whatever corresponding color you want, you can do opposite colors, you can do anything you want, pattern papers, but you want it to be a little bit thicker, more like a scrapbook type paper, maybe even a cardstock. You are going to need a needle quilling tool that will work best for this project, some small scissors, some tweezers, your white glue in a needle nose bottle, scissors to cut out your template, and I did also hold up there oh, a paintbrush. Uh, I do want to mention also that I use a uh, like an X-Acto knife later on. Oh, there it is. There's my X-Acto knife. You're going to need that when you are cutting out your paper for the wrapper. So please, please, please be very careful. And you're going to need a work board with some pins on it, a little bit of parchment paper, and then whatever backing board you use for your projects. I like to use this five by seven inch white mat board because it's very, very sturdy and it will not buckle or dimple under the, the glue that you're going to use to attach your cupcake later on. So, so many supplies. Let's start with the template. After you print that out, you're going to want to cut out a workable size. I would not recommend cutting right along the outline. I'm going to make a nice box around mine that's going to fit right on my corkboard work surface. So if your corkboard is a different size, you know, cut it however you like, but I'm just going to make sort of a square here, just like that, and get rid of the extra. I don't need that right now. Grab my work surface. And we've done this before, but I always, always, always get questions about this. The template is not your final surface. It is just the outline so that you know where you're putting your quilling. You're going to put a non-stick surface on top, and then you're going to pin that down in the corners. The pins are okay to go through all of these things because again, this is not going to be our final surface. We are going to end up peeling our quilling off of this surface later. I know I'm going to get more questions about this and I don't mind. I just want everybody to be assured that this is not what our final surface is going to look like. It is okay that we are using pins to go through the template. Now, put that aside for a moment. We're going to start making our frosting first. And like I mentioned before, I like to use two different colors of quilling paper for the frosting. I like to use a darker color, a slightly, slightly, slightly darker color for the outline, and then I fill it in with the lighter color. I think that adds a little bit of a dimensionality to it. It makes it look like the frosting is going in and out, and the darker color is acting as where the shadow of the frosting would be as it goes in to be 3D. I also need to make this a little bit more sturdy. So I'm going to make a double thick strip. I've done this thousands of times. Everybody's seen this, but just to go over it sort of quickly here, I take this long strip. Uh, by the way, this is ivory paper from Craft Harbor. It's a little bit longer than other paper. It's about 24 inches. I fold it in half. I do a steady line of glue down one half, fold it over again, and then zip it through my fingers. And what that's going to do between the two layers of quilling paper and the glue, it makes us a nice uh, kind of a sturdier, like a stiffer piece of paper that's perfect for on edge quilling. If you want to use a thicker paper like a cardstock that you bought specifically for on edge quilling, 
by all means go ahead and do that. I like to use what I have and try not to buy tons of extra paper if I don't need it. Sometimes you can't find those colors in the exact color you want. So after they dry, we can start doing the frosting. So I have two here that are dry and we're gonna start with the sort of swirl part of the frosting and then work down the other two layers. So we're doing a swirl layer first and then the other two layers. I have my pins handy. I have my Elmer's white glue in my needle nose bottle there. And I'm just showing that I'm doing the swirl first and then the other two layers. You're also gonna need your needle tool for this part. Uh, and then you can put that away for a few minutes. So I'm just going to give a couple of turns on my needle tool just to make the very center swirl, just like that. And then I also want to kind of loosen up my paper just a little bit. I run it through my fingers just to get that curl started. That will make it a little bit easier for your paper to want to kind of do this motion. All right, so now we're going to be using a combination of glue and pins to keep this paper where we want it. Remember, it's okay because we're not using this as a final surface. I start with that center spot and I put a, a pin through that and I also put a few dots of glue on the outline where I want my paper to sit. Just a few spots at a time. If you do a little bit too much, it's gonna start drying on you and then you've wasted that time. So I do a few spots. I put some glue, uh, some, sorry, some pins in to keep everything where I want it. Some on the inside, some on the outside. And then once I get that section done, about what it should look like now. I'm gonna turn my board upside down, mostly because it's easier to see what I'm doing on the video that way. And then I'm gonna do a few more dots of glue on the outline, dot, dot, dot. And the same thing, I'm gonna work, be careful of the pins in the corner, work my paper around that edge. And just keep it pushing. I will zoom in on this later in the project. I just wanted to make sure that we could see this part once we get to the detail. I'll get in a little bit closer. You don't have to stay exactly on the line, so don't start fretting if you feel like maybe you've gone off a little bit here or there. Once you get it all filled in, you're gonna get the look. I've done this many, many, many times. So don't worry too much about your, your frosting being perfect. You just want the, the idea of kind of that swoop around. Keep going here, a little bit of a wider turn here some pins in to keep it molded and then we're going to keep working our way all the way around this top swirl here like I said putting pins in and putting pins out that's sort of a feel thing if you feel like it's bowing one way or the other and it's not where you want it to be put a pin on the opposite side and that will help it stay into place I'm just going to show the end of this section so you can see what to do at the end there. Just keep going around. And the more you make of these and the more you use pins, it will start to make a little bit more sense which side of the paper you need the pins to go on. And you can put them on both sides, even really close together, and that will keep everything exactly where you need it. And I only put glue up to where this edge of frosting meets that side of the cherry. And I'm going to use my little tiny scissors right at that little intersection and just give it a little snip. That is our first layer of the outline of the icing. And we're gonna let that set for a couple minutes and then we're gonna move on to the next layer. So now we're going to start working on the second layer of frosting and you got the basic idea now so I just want to show one small thing is how to get that next layer attached. Get some focus here, there we go. What I like to do is tear off the end 
of this strip I'm using just to make sure it's a nice torn surface to get it attached a little bit better and give it a tiny fold and that just gives another kind of an anchor to whoops another kind of an anchor to have it attach a little bit more easily so a little bit of glue on that little spot there hello there we go and then I'm going to starting on the left side there just plug it right at the end of the icing line on that side give it a pin to get it in space into place excuse me and then it's just a matter of there we go so another pinch with the uh, tweezers never hurt either and now we can start going around that layer of icing in the same way that we did the first one a few dots of glue line it up and add some pins as needed I'm going to jump around here till the end of this line so you can see how to finish this row off as well so now we are at the end of that layer of the icing and you want to sort of eyeball it a little bit longer than exactly where it would meet that first layer so I'm gonna say about here and snip that off and then I'm just adding some glue to the first layer of icing just like that on the bottom of the first layer of icing right after where the two would meet and using my needle tool I'm just sort of slipping that strip underneath and you can see there that it doesn't exactly match up with the template that is okay could I have made that strip a little bit longer possibly that might have made it match up a little bit better but I'm just gonna manipulate it a little bit with my tweezers just to make it look a little bit more rounded and full and then pin that into place there we are there's our second layer and now we can move on to our third if you start to see a little bit extra glue uh, peeking out from underneath of your icing you can go ahead and just sort of wipe that away we're going to clean up the glue at the end so you don't need a lot you do need very very tiny little dots of glue you saw how small I was making my dots you do not need a lot of glue but still less to clean up later onto that third layer it's very similar to the second one we're gonna make a little hook with what's left of our uh, ivory paper I use just about all of those two strips that I used before if you always want to make more that's not a bad idea then you'll have them available and dry in case you you need to I'm going to attach that little hook right at the corner here one wants to be silly for a second if you feel like your icing is moving like mine just did there a little bit because I didn't let the glue set for long enough before I moved on to the third layer I just put a pin behind it and that way it'll stabilize that line and I can put my little anchor for my third layer there get that to set for a second and then we're going to finish it the same way as we did the second layer and here we're almost done add a few dots of glue cut off what you think is going to be the excess and pardon me for my hand being in the way sometimes things are just really tricky to do on camera so I will move in just a second here you're not missing anything that you haven't seen it's exactly the same way that I did the last layer tuck the piece underneath with my needle tool and just give it a pin to keep in place get a pin that actually wants to do its job there we go and okay there is our three layers of the outlines of the icing you do not need to use this method if you're more comfortable with the embossing style of on edge quilling I do have videos on that as well I like to do this I think it gives you a little bit more uh, workability a little bit more leeway in case you you know decide to make changes halfway through you're not stuck with your final surface and having your, your quilling right on there so anyway uh, at this point I took out most of the pins I did leave the end on the first layer and that little swirl just to keep those in place I'm going to make the outline of the wrapper 
at this point. And it's going to look sort of similar to what we just did for the icing. Obviously different color here. I chose that light blue. This is uh, from Quilled Creations. I did another double strip, very similar to what we did for the ivory. Made a little bit of an anchor and I'm starting on the left corner, getting that pinned in place. And then it's just a matter of a little bit of glue around the edges and then back up the other side. So really the same process as we did before, a few dots of glue, some pins to keep it in line. I like to put a pin right at the corner there and that will make it nice and crisp. A little bit of a pin on the back side there. And even if you want to give it sort of a little pinch, at the corner right around the pin. That'll really make that corner stand out. And I'm just gonna speed this up a little bit. We're gonna go right around the edge onto the other side. Similar situation in that corner. Keep adjusting it as you need to. It's okay if you need to, you know, really move this around a little bit. I think the wrapper is a little bit trickier than the, uh, the icing. It, straight lines aren't meant to be difficult, but just this is all one piece and just trying to get it to finish up the way you want it. Don't stress if your wrapper, again, isn't exactly on the lines. It will all work out just fine. Oh, now I needed to fix this side a little bit because I don't know if you noticed, I kind of brushed over it, but I snipped off a little bit farther than the edge of my strip just like we did before with the frosting so now i need a little bit of glue over here before i get that to sit i put a little bit of glue on the underneath of the frosting as well reinforce that spot with a pin on the other side and then it's a matter of folding it and trying to tuck it underneath because we want that corner to be sharp. We don't want to just kind of tuck it in like we did with the icing. And I realized I didn't fold it enough. It was still a little bit too long. So you could trim some more or you can just take it back out and fold a little bit extra. Completely up to you. I think that's probably the hardest part of this entire project really uh, is, is the wrapper. All right, so a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. And my scissors don't want to cut that part. So get that all back where I want it to be. Tuck it in, work it out, get the pins going. And again, I could have edited this part out, but I always like to show when something doesn't work the first time, even though I have made this project, I don't even know how many times. I used to sell these in my Etsy shop a long time ago and I sold a ton of them. Uh, Sometimes things don't work exactly the way you want them to the first or second time, and that's okay. Sometimes you gotta keep moving stuff around. This is why I like to do this project specifically with pins on a cork board instead of going right for the final product because I would have had to trash this whole thing, and that would have been unfortunate. So I finally got it all where I want it to be. And a little extra pin there in that corner for good measure. You want to make sure also as this uh, outline part is starting to dry that everything is flat against your um, your parchment paper. I like to um, use my tool and just kind of tap everything down and make sure nothing is, is sticking up. Sometimes part of your, your outline wants to stick up a little bit or you can use pins to kind of push it at an angle and that will keep it a little bit flatter. You want everything to be on the same level. Now, after you get your wrapper all together, we are going to move on to the next part. And the next part is going to be the cherry. For the cherry, I again have two different colors of paper. I have deep rose and then I have crimson. Put the crimson aside for a moment. We're gonna take this pinkish color. This is optional. You don't have to do this part if you don't want to, but I like to add it as a little bit of like a highlight. If you look at a really bright, shiny cherry where the light hits it, it's a little bit lighter on that part. 
I have about an inch and a half, maybe two inches of the the deep rose and a little bit longer than I ended up needing. I have about six inches there of the crimson. We're going to start with the, the, uh, the pink color, the deep rose, back on the needle tool and roll it completely from start to finish. You're gonna leave that on your tool and then you're going to put a little bit of glue on the little bit of a tail and roll that up. Just like that, a little bit of a peg. That's all we want. Now, leaving that on the tool, you're gonna to put a dot of glue. I like to do it right where the seam is. And then we're going to attach the crimson piece and start rolling that up. And you might be asking, why didn't you just glue the two strips together first and then roll them up? There is a reason. If you did that, your entire strip when you took it off the tool would open up into a swirl. I didn't want that. I wanted the pink part to still be tight and the, the crimson to open up by itself. So that's why I didn't just glue the strips together and then roll them. They would have both opened up. So we'll see you here in a second. Once I take it off the tool, what we are going for. Actually get that out of the way so you can see. Okay, so take it off the tool. I like to hold onto one bit of it and pull almost until it's completely straight. And that's gonna really make a very big coil. And from there, I'll sort of close it up on itself. But I found if I just let it open naturally, it, it just sort of opened up a little bit more wonky. So this way I can sort of make it go exactly the way I want it. It's a very open type of coil. It doesn't look like your more traditional coil where it's just one strip. And now I'm gonna fill in the spot where the cherry is. Oh, cherry. I add some glue to where that cherry would meet the, the icing. And I have found that putting the tail, the, I, I didn't glue it down. If I put that against where the icing is and just kind of use my needle tool to push it into the shape I want it, that works the best. I don't try to mold it with my fingers beforehand, but having just the tail up against the icing, if that makes sense, seems to make it mold the best. So I have that corner done and just push this part down into the other corner. Again, it doesn't have to look perfect. It doesn't have to fill that shape exactly. It just needs to be sort of a half dome of, of red. And I like to move the layers around. It's not a very good angle of what I'm doing, but I'm using my needle tool to push the layers of paper around so it sort of fills up that spot a little bit more. That's all that is. Now we're gonna make the stem for the cherry. You know, using a little bit more of that crimson paper. Again, it's a little bit more than I need at about four inches. Give it a few turns on one side. Kind of looks like a letter P. And then I'm going to put a little bit of glue where the end of that coil meets the rest of the strip. So I want that to be flush against the strip still. I don't want it to open up at all even using tweezers just to clamp that for a second will really help. And that should be fine. Now, if you want to measure this just to make sure you have the size you want, you can. I'm just gonna loosen this up a bit, go down about an inch or so, and fold the rest of the strip back up. And I want to get rid of the excess where it meets that coil. Then I'm going to just glue those two ends together. The coil the glue is starting to set a little bit. Glue the end of the strip to the other side of that coil. And just get that smooth on there. And then I like to kind of squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the V on the other side. Just make that really tight so it just opens up at the top. Here we go. Just opens up at the top where the coil is. And then it sort of looks like a cherry stem, sort of a 3D cherry stem situation. 
if you need to curve yours a little bit more, you can run it through your fingers just like that. Smooth that part still a little bit more. There we go. And then it's just gluing it to the top of your cherry. A little bit of glue and get that. You can see again, not exactly on the template. It is okay. Not every cherry is exactly like in the world. This one wants to go off at a little bit different angle and that's okay. Don't stress about that. Oop. Also don't stress about the fact that I didn't put enough glue on it and it fell off right away. Here we go. Get that together. Use your pins wherever you think you might need to. It's not gonna hurt to have a pin right there to keep that in place. At this point, you have all of your outlines done and it's a matter of filling in what's left. So here we are. Took most of the pins out so we could see what was happening. We're gonna start filling in the icing and for that, I have just a bright white uh, from Quilled Creations. And we are going to start zooming in. Here we go. Serious now. We're going to start filling in the smallest section of icing first. And for the icing, I do two main styles. Some of it I just make just curved pieces, and some of it I make kind of uh, kind of C scro scrolls, which are just a little bit of a coil and then a bit of a tail and I use those in different directions. So here's an example of the scroll and I sort of do a lot of estimating when I do this. Like I said, I've made these many, many times so it's, it's hard to give an exact size, but I tear off a bit, scroll it up and then I see where it fits is usually how I do this. I like to have all of my shapes facing the same direction as well. I think that adds to the sort of fluffy looking nature of the icing and all these curved lines kind of make the paper look like, you know, if you, you see that piped icing and it has all the ridges, like it came out of an icing bag, like with the little metal chips on it. This kind of gives the illusion of that. I know the lines aren't going in the exact same direction as you would with real icing, but when you get to the full look, it looks like fluffy icing. Here's an example of the other shape that I do, which is just a very gentle curve. And this piece actually fits towards the end, which is where I want it. So I make the shape, I measure it by holding it up to where I need it to be, and then I put a little bit of glue on either end and just set it into place. That's it. And then I move on to the next piece. So I like to do a few curves in a row, just curve it between my fingernails, tear off an estimate of what I think is gonna be. I'm sorry for the focusing on this part, it's very tricky to go back and forth with all these things, but I wanted to make sure you could see what it looked like inside the, uh, the icing. There's some glue on either end and place that in with tweezers. There's a little bit of a gap between every piece of paper that is going in the icing. That's what you want. So I'm going to add in another one of those little curved lines. There we go. That's the shape I want. It's a little bit long, but I think it will work. A little bit of glue on either side and get that into place. And now I'm going to move on to the other side of that scroll and I'm gonna add some more of those curved lines. Run it through my fingers, just to give it the gentle curve that we're looking for. Gonna eyeball that. That looks good. At some point, I'm gonna have to trim something. I'd like to show that, but these were all kind of working out, which is great, but at some point it's not going to. So I promise we will get there. And we're gonna keep moving on. Again, I apologize for the in and out of keep pushing this uh, cupcake out of frame, but I really wanted to make sure you could see everything and it's getting tricky to do with only one camera. So we finally have one here that we can trim. So it's just a matter of just trimming off a little bit with my very small scissors. Once I realized it was too long, bending again and getting that in there. 
kind of a weird curve it's doing right now, so we might need to mess around with that one. This is an, a good example of a project where it's a good thing that filling paper is so cheap because you don't use a lot of it. It seems like you do. These are all tiny pieces though. You may have some pieces that just move on. Like they're just not working. Get rid of that strip and try a different one. It's okay. There we go. That piece looks a little bit better. I know this doesn't look like much now. I promise as this gets totally filled in, you will really see the vision of what this cupcake looks like towards the end. It just, it's kind of hard to see it when you only have a few straggly lines. You're like, I don't get it. This doesn't look at all like frosting. As you fill it in, it will start to look more and more like a full sort of 3D uh, frosting effect on your, on your little cupcake. All right, now, this is another thing that I do to fill it in. I like to, that was a little bit short. I like to add a piece that connects, this might be confusing, I don't know another way to say it, adds a piece that connects the coil on my little scroll pieces to the edge of the icing. It's just to fill in the gap. If you don't use it, it's fine. I think it looks like it's missing something because you're gonna do a number of these sort of scrolls and it's going to look like there's big gaps in your icing. So I just add a little piece in a curve from the, the coil to the edge. So that was what that piece was. And we're gonna continue on with little scrolls. Here's another scroll and little coils and little curved pieces of paper until we get to the edge of that section of icing. And I do want to mention one other thing as far as these scrolls go. I like to put them one going one way and then the next one going the opposite way, like upside down, like that one. I just think it makes it look a little bit more organic and just, you know, not as expected. It just adds to the look. So that's why this one now is upside down. And we're gonna move on until we get to the very inner corner of that strip of icing. So at this point, I have filled in that whole section. You can see I put a really small little uh, coil where that point is, and I added the extra strips to the undersides of my scrolls, and now I'm gonna work on the second layer. Again, I'm not gonna show all of this. I am gonna skip around a bit. I just want to make sure that you understand exactly what we're doing. So here's another scroll piece. Coiled it up a little bit on my tool, took it off, made sure it was nice and curved. And we're starting on the same side of the icing and just moving in the other, Ooh, hello, work with me. Moving on the other side. I wanna have this one right up against the edge since the other one on the first layer was not up against the edge. A little bit of glue on both sides where it's gonna meet the outline of the icing. And that's that. And then from there, we are going to go all the way around that layer of icing. You may also, before I move on, I wanna mention this, you may feel the need to put pins on these little pieces as well if they're just not standing exactly where you want them to. I use them most often with the scrolls. I kind of put them right in the middle of the coil to have the coil stay exactly where I want it to as it dries. That is okay. You may use pins on this part as well, whatever you'd like to do. I think you're getting the gist of this, so we're gonna move on just a little bit. Okay, so now I have my whole second layer done. I have a bunch of these C-scrolls here. I have little pieces connecting both sides of them. Wherever there's an open space, I would just add another strip of quilling paper. So you're starting to kind of get the idea of how it can look a little bit more full adding all those little strips. And I did, like I said, use pins in the center of the scrolls to make sure that they were all exactly where I wanted them. They're not all the same size. They're not all going in um, from the top or the bottom. I like to mix it up a little bit. Taking any pins out that I can now, just so you can see a little bit more about what's going on, we're gonna start filling in the topmost layer of the icing. And this is very similar to before, except you have to deal with that first really tight curve that goes around. That's where we're going to start. Instead of starting on the side, like the first two layers, we're gonna start right in the middle where that 
first curve is, right where we first started doing the outline of the icing. So zoom in a little bit so we can really see what we have going on here. We are going to do very, very small strips starting from here and hitting the outside and then going around till we meet the cherry. This part here is the trickiest part. We will go over that in a moment, but the rest is gonna be pretty straightforward. If you've already handled the first two layers of icing, most of this will be no big deal, except these pieces are quite small. So tear off a very, very tiny bit and I'm going to get it set right kind of in this direction here and that looks like it'll fit fine so I'm going to add a little bit of glue just a touch here and there and then get this back in picture here so it's touching that centermost little round part and then hitting the the edge and then I'm going to keep going another little tiny piece Pull it back, measure it up. There's a lot of, like I said, estimating. So you're going to get an idea of how you big you want it, measure it, it fits, that's great. It doesn't, give it a trim or it's too long, just get a new piece and keep it pushing. It seems like it's gonna take a long time. It really doesn't. It's just, once you get the hang of how big you need your pieces to be, then you can get this moving a little bit faster, unfortunately. I just picked up that first piece with my tweezers, so I need to get that back in shape here. There we go, dealing with tight spaces. Sometimes even your tweezers will, will mess you up a little bit. Okay, so from here, we're gonna keep going around that curve. So you can see what it looks like here, just very small strips. Once you get towards the underside of the cherry, it's very small again. It's okay if it doesn't look perfect. Like I said, the overall image is what's going to work. Now. We got to the point where I said it's going to be the trickiest part. So we're going to take about an inch and a half here. We're going to do another C scroll. So I'm going to turn a few notches and have a loosen it up a little bit, curve the tail with our fingers. And what we're going to do is sort of just glue this coming from the side right about there. It's going to look like there's a big open spot for a few minutes and that's okay because you kind of have to do this section a little bit different. It's going to approach it a little bit differently than we did the rest of the cupcakes. So I kind of kept that into place, the same distance on all these pieces. I'm going to put a pin in there. Oop, just one though. There we go. I'm going to put a pin in there where I want the coil to be once it dries. But then I'm going to move on. I'm not going to worry about filling in that space just yet. I'm going to move on to the rest of the icing. So I'm kind of just skipping that whole corner for a moment. Come on. Okay. This piece is definitely too long. So I'm going to trim that up and then I'm going to keep going around the edge till I meet the other side. Now at this point, I have all of that filled in, very similar situation, some scrolls and then pieces where the edge of the scroll meets the edge of the, uh, the icing. And then we're gonna just fill in this section here, first with a piece from the underside of the C scroll to the edge of the icing. That was a little long, so I'll give it a little trim. Go. that should be about it so let's put some glue on those pieces and get those where I want it and then we're going to kind of keep doing the same thing a little tear so for this one you can have multiple pieces coming from the bottom of the C scroll to the edge that's okay just like any other project I do want to mention of course you can do this any way you want to you do not have to fill in your icing the exact way I do it you can do whatever you'd like this is just the way that I've always done it I just think it like I said it makes it look like fluffy icing it is a little bit of work but not at all impossible there's the second piece and we're just gonna do a few more 
just to fill in that empty space. And at that point, we will be all done with the icing. And there you go. That is our completely filled in icing for this cupcake that I made. From the beginning, I said it might not look like icing when you're first starting, but as you fill it in and as you make sure there's no major gaps in your strips and your scrolls, it really does sort of look like fluffy icing. At this point, we are ready to tackle filling in the wrapper. There's gonna be a million ways you can do this. And trying to figure out what the easiest way to explain this was, this is what I came up with. I find this to be the easiest way, is cutting out the wrapper shape from the uh, another one of the templates. You could trace it. Um, you could have done all of this the opposite way and built it right on your little wrapper paper. There's a different ways you can do this. Because even as hard as you try, you will not end up exactly on the line of your wrapper every time. I just think this is the easiest way to do it so you don't have to stress too much about it being perfect, perfect, perfect and staying on line. This gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So I used my X-Acto knife to cut out the wrapper shape and then I went back on the paper that I'm using for the wrapper and cut it out bigger on the sides, very slightly, but bigger on the sides and trying to keep the shape of the top close as I can. So that's why I, you saw me kind of go a little bit on the outside with that X-Acto knife. Please be very, very careful. If you are not comfortable with this, do not use an X-Acto knife. Please use a pair of scissors. And also if you do use an X-Acto knife or a cutting blade, please use a cutting surface like this Fiskars cutting board that I have here, a cutting mat. That way you're not scratching up any of your furniture or your desk or whatever. So only use that if you are super sure about that. So now I have my wrapper piece all of my icing is dry and set. My cherry is good to go. I have to take this off my work board in order to attach the wrapper. I go around very carefully and slide my needle tool underneath my quilling on top of my parchment paper to loosen up any of those little glue bits. Just very smooth around every edge until it just pops off. Remember before, in the very beginning, I said, do not worry about putting pins in your template. This is why, because we took it off completely. You can see there, I just pointed out, there are quite a bit of little glue bits. Even though I brushed away uh, any of the glue bits I could see while I was doing it, there are still some, especially the ones that are on the outer edge. You might want to take the time, either with your cutting blade again or some small scissors and just snip those puppies right off. They do come off very easily, so there's not a lot of glue. I just like to get as close as I can to the edge. I'm being very careful with how I'm holding this, especially the wrapper. I, want, I don't want to bend it. So just a couple of snips. You can also, like I said, use a cutting blade if you put this right on your your cutting surface, you can kind of just push down on them and they'll pop right off as well. I don't stress too much about the ones underneath the icing. Uh, it's really hard to see them, but the ones on the outside, I like to get those off. So now I line it up against my uh, paper that I'm using for my wrapper. And I like the way that it is matching up to the bottom of the frosting. If it was not matching up, I would have trimmed off what I needed but it matched up pretty well. It's definitely still big around the wrapper, but I wanted that. I did not want it to be right up against the edge of the wrapper. And a little bit of glue to the edge of any place where the wrapper paper is going to hit the cupcake. And then I'm going to be very careful, especially on the top. That's a little bit tricky to get that lined up again. If it was any longer, I would see it through the cupcake. So I don't want that. I just want it. I could have even made this a little bit bigger on the side. It starts to get a little bit close 
on this edge here. So I'm going to have to hold that in and make sure it's actually attached to the paper. I will mention also, you are welcome to also do this for the frosting piece and even the cherry if you want a completely colored background. You can do this to any of these pieces or none of these pieces. If you don't like this look and you want it to be just solid filling without the extra colored paper, you can do that as well. Just skip all this part. Now I'm going to cut off any excess paper that is peeking out from under the quilling paper on the wrapper. It's here where I realized how terrible my cutting blade is and that I need to replace it. So it's really kind of given me a lot of grief there and I'm afraid of pulling too hard and tearing something. So I'm moving to scissors, which is always another option as well. It's a little bit trickier just to make sure you get as close as you can. You might need to turn this a number of ways. I found that cutting sort of an, on an angle gets you even closer than just cutting straight across. So you can see here I sort of have turned this quite a bit to the side so I can really get close. So just do the best you can to get as close as you can. There we go. And so you're gonna trim off all the way around any excess bits. I am pretty happy with where we are on the trimming. So now it's just a matter of mounting the cupcake onto our final surface. This is going to be more of a home decor type of item. Uh, so we're using that heavy mat board which is perfect for framing and just applying some glue to the back of the quilling. It doesn't need to be a lot of glue, really just some dots here and there and also on the back of the wrapper. And then we're going to get this lined up in the middle as straight as we can if you want to use rulers or whatever to make yourself more comfortable with putting this in the center you can do whatever you'd like i use my tweezers to make sure that i had it exactly where i want it and also just to make sure that everything stays flat and one level while it's drying i just put my work board back on top a little bit of weight on top from the glue and the tools and then that should stay nice and flat as it dries there we go. The last part here is to decide how and even if at all you'd like to fill in the rest of the wrapper. I'm going to go ahead and just make some simple, simple, simple heart designs just to add a little bit more of dimension to that cupcake wrapper. And to do that, I am grabbing some more of that same light blue and making hearts out of two strips of. They're about three inches long paper and then I'm going to curve them into teardrop shapes and glue them together. Just for time's sake, I'm cutting most of that part out because you may have seen this many times before. It's really basic quilling. Here is the second half of my little heart. Give it a good pinch. And then we can glue that with this one that I already made. Really, really, really basic stuff here. But if you sat through this entire video, I'm trying to make it as short as I can. It's really, really long and I apologize for that, but only there's so many steps. It's a lot to, uh, to cover in one day. So there's a little heart. And for this project, I ended up making five of those and just glued them to different parts of the wrapper just to fill it in a bit and just make it look a little bit more finished and even a little bit more 3D. But you can use whatever comes up in your imagination for this part, whatever paper you have. You can really play around with different patterns and different colors. You can do different holidays if you want to. There's so many variations you can do on these cupcakes. And I do have a few to share. Uh, here is one with more of a strawberry icing. It's pink with a darker pink outline. And then for the wrapper, I did more of kind of like a swoopy kind of design with the purple. Here I have an orange wedge on top 
but a similar kind of vanilla frosting. This, pa this paper is really cool because it's got some texture to it, but I did a similar heart design. I can leave a video for how to make those orange wedges in the description box for this video. Uh, what else do I have? I also have a winter theme here with a snowflake. This one doesn't have the wrapper filled in, nor does this one with a candy corn. So if you're looking for a Halloween craft still, that might be something to think about. And then of course I have chocolate cupcakes. So there is a chocolate filled one again with the cherry and without paper on the bottom, just filled in with some quilling, which is always an option. If you don't want to go that paper route, this is what it would look like if you skipped that whole section. Woo! So, so much work. If you stuck around, like I said, I really appreciate your time. I know this was a long one and we covered so much, but the end result, they are so cute. These are super classic papery craftery quilling projects. I started making these, I don't even know, my daughter was born yet, maybe back in 2013, 2014. These have been around a really long time. So I really am so glad to be able to share them with you finally. I will leave links to so many things in the description box for this video, all the supplies, all the tools, a bunch of different videos, of course, a link to the template. So please look there for that. I also I'll always have a link to my buy me a coffee page where you can show some extra support and also get exclusive access to an additional buttercup video that you can find nowhere else. Any question you have, of course, leave those in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I can. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.